And there you have it. <coughs> your lovely two-sided throw pillow for your dining and dancing pleasure. Just like I used to do it on TV. There you go. Hey, oh, thanks, Chief. It. Thanks a lot. Button. Damn. Hey, a button. Ed? Yeah, Joe, hey. Ed. How you doing? Good, how are you? Well, you know, I'm... I'm in a kind of a lull now, uh, a little zip code challenge. <coughs> but yeah. I got some things cooking. Yeah, yeah, you look natty, though. Well, I just, you know, finished the picture with Nicholson, and uh, things are going good. I got another place in the Hollywood, and uh, me and Michelle, like this. Oh, yeah? Got a meeting today with Geffen. So. Oh, yeah, watch yourself. But, you know, we were we were doing so good, and, and then all of a sudden, I forget what happened. Well, you took that off, and you went to the All Button Network. Yeah, that Barry Diller, he sold me a bill of goods, yeah. didn't he? Now Listen, I Ed, remember. I, I don't mean to rush you, but do you think you can put a button on this? Really, I, oh, I really... Oh, no, no I, sweat, I, I, Chief. It's really important. Gratis, really, babe. Okay? Come on, Chief, I'll fix you right up. Give okay. me that. Okay, welcome to the Quick Fix Show, where we're going to... Show you easy, quick ways to fix common furniture. Problems? You know people write us all the time and ask... Many of the same questions, so here are the answers, and if... You think you're going to have trouble following us, then... Hit that record button on your VCR now. Do you want to hide from your family for hours or more in the basement? We've got just the project for you. You can make your own wax sticks. Yes, you can make your own wax sticks. Now, this is a wax stick you can find in a big store or home center, but it's not a chocolate cigarette. No, it's not. So let's see you make the wax sticks. Well, you know how you make these? I made these once at a job when I worked out of a guy's shop. Mm -hmm. He built something on an unlevel surface, took it to a place, tried to install it on a level surface, and all the miters didn't fit. There was like eight-inch mm. gaps all over the place. So he said, I need some wax sticks. I said, well, all I got are these little guys, but I can make you some big ones. So I made about three pounds of wax sticks using beeswax. Three pounds of wax sticks. Did he bees, pay you by the pound? Beeswax, which I ground up. Where Look I at that stuff. Chipped up like this. Put some in a uh, double boiler. And over here, we have the coloring, some dry pigment. This is like a dark red mahogany, and this is a yellow, uh, a raw sienna. So we do this. See, you got a color now. There's a nice color. And it's a red mahogany. Looks like hot fudge. Now, let's say I wanted to make it a little lighter. Let's say. Throw in some of this. You can mix and match all different colors. Now I'm going to... Uh, put in some put oil? A, a little bit of oil just to make it pliable. That's just lemon oil furniture polish. That's going to make it pliable. Now, the next thing I've done is I've rolled up wax paper, heavy-duty wax paper, into a tube and just crimped the end. And you can uh, put some masking tape on it. Or, as we've done here, we've tied it up with string the old-fashioned way. Just well, like we didn't film. have any tape. Okay. i got to put this on because this is... Uh... So now we have to heat it up a little bit so yeah, we can start it in. It's starting to get harder. You see... It's like chocolate. I'm going to try and get this right through the center there. Journey to the center of the, of funnel, the funnel with Pat Boone. Pat Boone is a Scotsman. Good luck to you. Don't help me. Now, all you got to do is wait, wait for that to dry. All right, the wax is hard. That. A lovely big cigar. The wax stick, homemade. Make some today. Say good night, crazy. Have you ever had a dresser delivered with a loose top like this? It's got too much flex in it. You don't want that. Now, how do loose tops happen? That's because the guys moving the furniture didn't pick up the piece as they should do, which is bend from the knees and pick up down here. They just picked it up from up here. With a jerk, they pulled the screws out. Here's what you should do when a piece of furniture with a loose top comes to your house. Now, I know in the average American bedroom, you're not going to turn your four-foot dresser over on its back, but we can do it here. 
and we're going to, as we always try, to use our bodies as our clamps. We can see into here the loose screw, and I position my right angle screw gun so that it catches that, and you do it by feel, and you apply the bodies thusly until that lovely sound of security and tightness abounds. Now, sometimes these guys will pull so hard that they'll strip the hole that the screw is in. That means that the, the screw hole is now bigger than the screw itself. What do you do? You go to a fatter screw. Do not go to a longer screw, because if you go to a longer screw, it will go right through the top, and then you'll have a staining problem and you might have an abdominal problem as well. So easy, so simple. Flip a dresser upside down real soon, won't you? Eisenhower, right after D-Day. Friday, beginning at 8 on TLC. Wines this good must be guarded with care. That's why Franzia comes in an airtight pouch that protects the fresh taste to the last glass. Maybe that's why it's America's favorite wine. Our friend Ronnie and her husband, <laughs> they just moved into a new house. They have great taste. Great taste. We wanted to get them something really, really nice. So naturally, we want some pure wine. <laughs> They have such wonderful things there. Candle holders, vases. We considered some really different ideas. We finally decided on the perfect thing. And then when they opened their gift, they saw that we have great taste, too. Find the good things you're looking for at Pier 1 Imports for a change. There's more soap residue in your hair than you think. So you better call your RainSoft water treatment dealer today. The impossible is now possible. From the makers of Krylon comes the next revolution in painting. Latex enamel in a spray. A vivid array of color. The ease of a spray with low odor. An easy cleanup. The beautiful long-lasting finish of enamel. Introducing new Krylon Living Color, latex enamel in a spray. The next revolution in painting. I know barbecue is very competitive. I venture to say that I've cooked 20,000 pounds of meat in these cookers. I plan on being the, the best barbecue in the United States. Let me find my thermometer. If you'd like to come over here, I'd like to present you with the rib that's earned the title Best Ribs in the Universe. Well, it looks very nice. I'd be proud to have that on my deck. I, in fact, I've always favored the red color. The Human Zoo. And the Biology of Love. Desmond Morris's The Human Animal. Saturday, beginning at 8 on TLC. From planting a garden to building a deck. Everything you need to know to get the job done right. It's a full day for the do-it-yourselfer. Home Improvement's Debbie Dunning is here. So join me for TLC's Home Project Day. Monday, beginning at noon. Chewing tobacco. That's what this is. I don't know how you can bite this and chew into it, but you can make a nice stain out of it, that's for sure. We've thrown some into a bucket here with some water, and we got it burling. See that? It looks, uh, these collards is too overcooked. I don't know. You can make a stain out of it, though. And I'm going to show you. This is what the plug looks like. Take this and pour it right into this strainer. They did this in the old days, the way old days. Do a little bit there. A quick filter, and we'll put it on some oak. Now, it is a water stain, so after it's dried, it will raise the grain a little bit. But it gives you a nice, warm brown color. And, of course, the longer you let it sit, in the bucket, 
and simmer, the darker it's going to get. This was in there for about, oh, a half hour. But it gives not a natural look, but it gives you some nice highlights. And let it dry, and it'll fuzz the surface a little bit because it's going to raise the grain because it's water-based. Just sand it lightly, and then you can finish right over top of it. No neutralizing, no nothing. Just don't stick it in your mouth. Don't chew it up. Ain't no good for you. Now, let's go see what Ed's doing next. The subject is a squeaky chairs. Push down on it, you sit down on it, and you hear this sound. That's, that's not the sound. Hold on. Let me find it. That's... No, that's not it either. There you go. That's the sound. It's very easy, and it happens with new chairs as well as old chairs. You just flip it up and remove the cane brick. Or dust cover. And you'll find that this chair, like many others, has the zigzag springs. Now, here's where the zigzag springs attach to the zigzag spring clips. And that, most undoubtedly, in my opinion, is where this noise is coming from. And when the spring clip, the spring moves within the spring clip, the squeaky mouse-like sound emanates from there. All you do is you get this stuff. This is uh, silicone spray, degreaser, some people call it. I buy the gray tape brand, and you get the straw. Now, how many of you will lose this straw three minutes after you buy the can? And we stick the straw in there, and kabam. Not so long, rust all gone. Use that. Up here, we have this band that keeps these zigzag springs from bumping into each other with the force of the Titanic hitting an iceberg. And we do the same thing on these spring clips. We're done. We flip, before we flip it down, we would ordinarily put back on the cane brick. Or dust cover. And we see if we have done our job well. Pressing down. That's the sound we like. That's what we can live with. It's my turn. I'm going to show you how to clean your brushes. Ed wanted me to save cleaning brushes, how to clean and wrap brushes for a whole show. But I said, no, I've got to show it in a condensed form. So that's what I'm going to show you. Look at this brush. It's kind of hard. See that? Didn't clean it out properly. I got paint on it. It's dried varnish. How do you reactivate it? Well, you can just set it in some lacquer thinner overnight. It'll soften all of the uh, paint and varnish, and then you could clean it out normally in mineral spirits and then in soap and water. This now is a, is a nylon brush, okay? You don't put this in lacquer thinner. It'll get dissolved. You don't want to use that. But after you're cleaning, you want to use this. This is called a spinner, or as I like to call it, the turnarounder. Okay, now this brush I used earlier for doing some varnishing. So I'm just cleaning it off. Got some paint thinner in here. Get most of the excess out. What this does is it rids the brush of all the excess solvent. You just clip it into the turn arounder. Just like this here. This has an awkward style handle. It's a round handle, so it's more difficult to fit in. You see how it fits in there? Goes in the front jaw. Let me show you. In the front jaw, and then it goes into the back jaw. Ugh. It's like alien. And then you spin it. See that? But it's not clean yet. I'm going to put it in some lacquer thinner now. This will break up any of the mineral spirit residue. OK. Clip it in again. Ah. And you got it spinned again. There, now it's nice and clean. Now, normally, I would take soap and water Clean it under some soap and water, and then take a piece of newspaper, like this here. Fold it over, put your brush in there, and fold nice and neat. I remember my old man used to do this all the time. He couldn't paint for hell, but he wrapped his brushes nice. And he used only oil paint. So he would paint the house in the summer, and for the entire summer, you felt like you were in a can of paint. That's how you wrap a brush. You can put a little tape around it or a rubber band and put it away for safekeeping. Okay? So, from dirty brush to clean wrap brush, 
Now you're ready to clean all your brushes. And buy a turnarounder. They're wonderful. Take it from me. Welcome to Thomasville, where this Memorial Day you'll find elegance and timeless craftsmanship at once-in-a-lifetime prices. The Thomasville Memorial Day Sale. Extraordinary furniture, extraordinarily priced. Call now for details, because after May 27th, this sale will only be a beautiful memory. Thomasville. Make yourself at home. This is Janie Sanchez. This is the actual phone number called by Janie Sanchez, the number for the Fannie Mae Foundation. These are the actual free guides sent to Janie Sanchez, step-by-step -step information on how to choose a mortgage and buy a home of your own. This is the actual home that Janie and her husband purchased. Hi, honey. And that's her actual husband. Be like Janie. Call the Fannie Mae Foundation. From victory in the Pacific, all the way to Desert Triumph, a special Memorial Day event, Battles to Remember, Monday beginning at 7 on TLC. Get ready for how-to advice from the ground up on the Renovation Guide, coming up next. Then, double your knowledge, double your fun, with back-to-back -back episodes of Home Time. It's all next, right here on TLC. It set the standard in do-it-yourself books, but now... We've made the best even better. Introducing the all-new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. With new color illustrations, step-by-step -step instructions, and a new spiral binding so books lay flat, it's never been easier to save money and create the home you've always wanted. You'll learn how to build a deck your family will enjoy for years. The tricks of the trade to install a new patio. Call now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the special low TV price of just $1.99. Use your credit card and get this Stanley tape measure absolutely free. Other volumes will follow. Keep only those you want. The new home repair and improvement series from Time Life Books. We've made the best even better. Call 1-800-795-5588 now to get decks, porches, and patios for just $1.99. That's 1-800-795-5588. A lot of people get dressers delivered, and then the mirror comes later with these sticks, and they don't know how to put it on. It sounds easy, but people don't know how to do it, and I would come out to their house and attach it for a fee watch as I do it gratis. And these are the mirror supports, brackets, that come with these little attaching plates, flanges, I don't know. These things are not in the dictionary, many of them, so we don't know what to call them. The things that come in the mirror supports. The first thing you do is, after you unpackage, you lay the mirror on top of the dresser with a blanket underneath, as I have here. The next thing you do after you take out these things is to measure where this bottom screw hole is going to hit at the very bottom of the back of the dresser. You have a solid rail up top and a solid rail down the bottom. In the middle, if you screw anything in, it's just going to catch your undies. So we lay this down to the bottom where this screw hole meets, and then we get the pencil, and we make a mark. Well, we make a mark where it clears. So we turn this over here, and then we get our trusty screwdriver, gray tape brand, and we make a screw. We make a nice screw up at the top. Hey, Joe, come in here. What, what, what do you need me for? Come around this side. Oh, come this side. No, come next to me. This side. Come next to me, and just hold that there. Put that one hand. One hand like this? Yes. No, not like that. A little bit further up. Right pa there? Pass the fall. Just use me as a gauge. Past the fulcrum. Past, right there. Right there. I, I was preparing over here some other stuff. There you go. Right like that. Now, one step back. Yeah. Take finger away. Very good. Now, retract finger. Next, we take these little things, which we know not Do the I name of. Do I just stand of. here like this? You can and we place them over 
the stick right at the base of the mirror, and we take. No, no, no. Well, I can hold it down here. Are you sure? Now we go on the other side and do it. We want to go give these little shots, because if you go in with a big, long, macho-type screw, sometimes you split wood. Now, this is for adjusting the level, or what is... No, this is just for tightening it when we're finished. Oh, okay. Now, the next thing we do is we make a center mark here, because we want to line this up. A center mark. This is 38 and a real little bit extra. Right here. <laughs> hey, it just so happens that there's a screw hole there already. 19. Here. I have already made... That's the mark right yes, there. Yes. I have already made a center mark on the, t on the back of the top of this dresser. Time to flip the mirror up, center it, and put a screw anchoring the bottom. Take that blanket away. Match up these marks. Match here. up the center marks right there. I'll hold this. This is a real easy mirror to work with because it's got a flat bottom, and even if you took your hands away, it would probably sit there. It would. Now remember, you gotta get into the bottom rail. Pass screw over here. Have a screw and a driver. If you wanted to elevate it, you would leave the piece of styrofoam. Yeah, but why would you want to elevate it? Well, some mirrors don't want you don't want them to sit flat and flush because some mirrors pivot. So oh well, if it's a flipping space. mirror, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. The next thing you do is get another one of yeah, these oh, here. flange guys. Oh, you want to get it? Yeah, thank you. And you position this on the back of the top. And that makes it nice and tight. Yes. If you were doing this by yourself, you'd keep a knee against one of these brackets until you got your screw in the bottom. Okay, the last thing you do is, with a regular slotted screwdriver, tighten these guys, and that keeps it from shimming, ar and shimming that, around. That'll bite into the metal and into the wood. Yes, it will. It's your final and clamp. It. And do so to you. This is not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of measuring, a couple of cheap metal screws, and uh, more patience than we have. So now it's time to, VSL. time to turn the mirror around and begin teasing hair. This is called the end grain problem. <laughs> end grain. Now, what happens when you get two pieces of wood, you're building a unit, let's say it's a piece of oak, and you're going to do a butt joint? Simplest kind of joinery, where you take the plain piece here, and you butt it into this piece, this is your end grain right here. Now, when you wind up, when you get to around to staining it, okay, you stain. You see how that absorbs a lot more stain? This looks nice, and that looks much darker. Well, the way you get around that is by shellacking the end grain. Now, I'll turn this board around. See how neatly I had that done already? You shellac this end grain, which I've already done here. This has been shellacked with a three-pound cut, straight out of the can. I just took some straight shellac, brushed it over there a couple times, and let it dry. Now, you sand it. It's nice and smooth, and you go over it, and it's a nice, neater, cleaner finish, and... This way. There you go. There you go. See that? And when you stain the wood, see how much neater it looks now? It matches in a more harmonious fashion. You know, you can even use sugar and water. If you mix up a thick paste of sugar and some water, you can brush that on and let it dry. Just make sure you stain the piece before the ants come. Okay? So now I'm going to throw this over to Ed, not the wood, just to him. Fabric pools, what are they? How did they get here, and what to do about them? I'm going to answer the first question first, the third question second. As for the second question, I don't know. No one knows. This is a fabric pull. It is not a broken thread, but it is a loop of, of stitch that has somehow become disengaged from the general weave of the fabric just as my 
synapses are coming away from my brain as we speak. The temptation is to cut it, but don't do that because it will eventually unravel the weave, unravel the fabric, and unravel your life. You take a needle and do the opposite of pull, that is to say push. Now I have to drop my glasses down because I'm 40 years old and I have to do close work. And now I push and I push and I push and I push. And there you go, straight and true, back inside the weave, you little renegade pull. And as you can see, it will take you literally one quarter of the time that it took me to pad this meager bit. Fabric pulls, fix them. A Couple of quick, quick fixes. Very quick, so quick, there's no examples. <laughs> Oh, I, I have one. I have a button here. If the buttons are loose, <laughs> not, <laughs> but not off on your throw pillow or, they're or just back like cushion. hanging off. No, if they're just a little loose, yeah. what you could do is wind them. That will shorten up the thread and make them tight. The only possible disadvantage is if you wind them so much you're leaning against them, somehow, without warning, they could start to spin and just wear a new bald spot in your head. <laughs> like right a regular, an irregular bald spot. And, you know, believe it or not, they do sell a salad bowl finish. Mm -hmm. And, a, and a, for, your, for wooden salad bowls, you buy it, it comes in like a quart bottle. And you just rub it on and you won't deny it. The salad does taste better. In fact, one bottle will last you until lettuce is extinct. <laughs> hey, there you go, Chief. All done. Yeah, that's hey, just great, Ed. Hey, maybe you and Michelle can have me out to the house sometime. Yeah, okay. She still put on that cat suit? Okay. <laughs> all right, hey. Like we used to say, be nice yeah, to your furniture, right, all well, right? You take care of yourself, all yeah, right? Yeah, take care, Chief. Wait a minute, that ain't right. Next on TLC, put a vintage house in tip-top shape. Bob Vila shares his years of experience on the renovation guide. Then it's a twofer, back-to-back -back home time shows with Dean and Joanne.